This is really good. Okay, right, we found a win. I would absolutely use ChatGPT for this again. This is fantastic. ChatGPT is pretty clever, but is it good enough to help you revise for your A-level in chemistry? In this video, I'm going to put it through its paces and ask it to describe some chemistry concepts, prepare me some questions that I could use to help me revise on something like a flashcard, and I'm also going to ask it to plan me out some revision sessions so I know how to use my time best ahead of the summer exams. Check out the video description for more information, and you can also check out the timestamps if you want to skip ahead to a specific question from those you can see on the left-hand side of the screen at the moment. Okay, so for this first one, I'm going to ask it to describe a practical procedure. So we often like to revise our practical procedures when we're getting ready for the summer exams, and we need to be able to summarize certain procedures in order to make sure that we can put these in like a level of response question, maybe in paper three, something like that. So preparing a standard solution is a pretty common one. If you want to see my version of this, then check out the link in the video description, but I'll also put a link at the top of the screen now, and let's see how ChatGPT compares to that. Obviously, my version is going to be really stripped down to make sure it's suitable for the exam, but I'm interested to see how much detail ChatGPT can give me on this. I've also asked it to include the names of apparatus, because that's important, a method for the procedure, and I've actually asked it to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide that I would need to prepare a, a 0.3 mole per decimeter cube solution with a volume of 250 centimeters cubed. Let's have a look and see how it does. So, here we go. Okay, so it's giving us lots of information. Oh, excellent. So we've actually got a nice list of apparatus, including a very important 250 centimeter cubed volumetric flask. That's really good. And we've got a pretty decent method. This is not bad. Okay, let's have a quick look through what we've got. So let's make this the main screen. Then. Let's have a right good gang through this. Okay, so if they've done the calculation right, it should be three grams. Now, I can't see any actual mass that they are suggesting here. That's a little disappointing, but they have given a description of how I would need to do the calculation, so that's pretty good. So they said what I need to do to find the mass, so they've also almost made it a little challenge for us. Um, I can see here that I've got a full method. That's actually not a bad method at all. Um, I can see, I think I'm missing transferring the washings, but it's not bad. It's pretty good. I don't think it's A-level specific enough, to be honest, um, but it has got a decent amount of detail. This is not bad at all, and you could use the calculation that they've described. So actually, that's a pretty good start, although not perfect for your A-level. So we found a little limitation, but we've also found some good stuff with this first one. Let's move on to our next question, which is describing how we should purify an organic solid. Now here I decided to go a bit specific and I've asked it to do this according to the OCRA, a level in chemistry specification, because I'm asking it something now which might have some spec specific language in it. So I'm gonna try and make sure that the response I get back is spec specific as well. Let's see how it does for this one, because this is another procedure that you need to be able to summarize the stages of. It's probably gonna go into too much detail, but let's have a look. Oh, wow. Ah, it mentions a recrystallization. That's pretty good. Selecting the solvent. Okay. We've got the minimal amount of solvent. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of information here. But actually, this is, from what I can see, this is largely accurate. Um, it's just maybe a bit too much information. We've got using a filter paper. Have we got reference to like a Buckner funnel or a Buckner flask in this? I can't see any references to Buckner funnels and Buckner flasks. So we're missing maybe some apparatus, so maybe I need to tweet the question for this one. But it has got some good stuff here. It's just, obviously, you're not going to write all of that in your A-level exam, are you? Not for two or three marks. That's way too much information. But generally here, it has got the stages right. Um, we just need to fine-tune that kind of thing for A-level. So again, some successes, some losses with this, but it's not too bad. Maybe fine-tuning the question would help, but it does mention here that this is OCRA specific, so it's got some good stuff in there. Let's move on to the next one. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to look to see if it can write me 10 questions based on a specific section of the specification. And I've given it the reference. I've said it's section 2.2.2 of the OCRA, A Level in Chemistry spec, and it's the bonding and structure. And what I want are 10 questions and answers. Let's see how it does for this one. So we'll make it the full screen because we're going to get loads of information from this. Okay, here we go. Sure, here are 10 questions. Okay, definition of covalent bond, difference between polar and non-polar, difference between ionic and covalent, electronegativity, 
Do you know this is not bad? Oh, hybridization, that's not an OCR. Okay, so it's not done a bad job. Some of these questions, let's have a look at these. So let's check out the questions first. So definition of covalent bond. Okay, if it's got the right one, covalent sharing of electron pairs between them. Mm, it's not, I'm not sure that's enough definition or enough detail in the definition, I should say, for OCR, but it's not bad. Explain the difference between polar covalent bond and non-polar covalent bond. Um, yeah, let's see if it's done that. Unequal sharing of electron. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not really a definition we need. Difference between ionic and covalent, so number four. Um, I know bonus transfer of electrons from one to another. Yeah, okay. Covalent bond sharing. Like, yeah, 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 that's pretty good. But again, these aren't very a level Um, Explain the term electronegativity. Let's have a look. Number seven. Ability of an atom to attract shared electrons in a covalent bond. Um, it, again, it's not really too a level specific. My concern here is... It's going a bit outside of the language that your teachers might encourage you and I would encourage you to use with some of the specifics. We have got some nice, what is question 10? Let's have a look at that one. Um, for question 10, discuss the differences between intermolecular, intra, oh, again, we don't use the term intramolecular force really on OCRA. It's, it's not bad, but it's maybe again, it needs a bit of fine tuning. But if I was if I was to feed it some information that wasn't just asking it to go outwards into the specification for itself, then maybe it would do a better job. So if I was to type something together, which we might try in another video, let's see if it would be able to prepare me some questions on that instead. But as a general research tool for the OCRA specification here, it's not done a terrific job, although it has understood how to ask questions about the bonding topic, where maybe need, maybe need this a little bit more fine tuning. Okay, next up, we'll stick with the bonding topic. Describe the different types of intermolecular force in chemistry according to the OCRA specification. Let's give it another shot at the OCRA spec. Let's see how it does for this one. According to the OCR, we've got London um, dispersion forces. We don't use Van der Waals for this. Dipole-dipole interactions, yeah. Hydrogen bonding, ion dipole, okay. Reaching into module five a bit there. That's not really an intermolecular force. Again, similar to the other stuff, we've asked it to give us something specific to OCRA. We've got quite a broad description of what's going on. We don't use the term van der Waals forces really on OCRA. Um, unique for London forces. It's, it's definitely not something that we use anymore. We use the term London forces instead, which would be temporary induced dipole as well. And I can't see reference to that. Uh, dipole, dipole, uh, positive end of one polar molecule. Yeah, we could maybe be a bit more specific with partial charges. Um, hydrogen bonding. Yeah, the hydrogen bonding description is not bad. Again, though, it's just it's maybe just not quite A level enough. So it's got some good chemistry in here, but we know how specific those A level uh, chemistry mark schemes can be. So maybe this isn't perfect for it, but it's got a good start. Again, I would look at maybe feeding this some of my own chemistry information and seeing how it does. Okay, let's see if it can make us a checklist. Let's see if it can make us something that we could use to revise. And again, we're going to try and make this OCRA specific. Boom, let's have a go with this. Okay, so it's got atomic structure, bonding and structure, redox, two lots of redox, some inorganic. Yeah, we've got some more inorganic here. Okay, when we're into organic. Physical chemistry, it's decided what physical chemistry is for itself. That's good. Okay, this is not bad, but it's a bit short. So this isn't really enough. Again, I've not asked it, I've not given it some information. I've just said, use the OCRA specification. Um, it's, it's not bad in terms of getting you to do some stuff, but I don't think this goes into enough detail as a checklist. So I'll definitely stick with the one that OCR have given us for now. All right, let's see if it can just help me do some general revision. Let's see if it can help me plan out my time. So I'm going to ask it to, uh, design me five different two hour revision sessions. Make sure to include some rest breaks and a mixture of revision activities that includes the use of past exam questions. So what we'll do is, since we're moving into a different set of questions here, we'll start a new chat with it. So we'll start our new chat because that means then we're not going to get too much overlap with all the chemistry stuff. And it won't just suggest us stuff on uh, the things we've already asked because it does sometimes do that. Okay, design me five different revision sessions. Let's have a go. Here are five different revision sessions. Let's see what we can have here. We've got a bit of a warm-up. Okay, this is not bad at all. Oh, this is this is brilliant. This is delicious. 
It's got some past exam question stuff there like I asked it to. This is really good. Okay, right, we found a win. I would absolutely use ChatGPT for this again. This is fantastic. This is great. This is asking you to really plan out your time. It's giving you rest breaks in here. They're all different from each other. You've got working with other people. You've got group roommates full screen. This is actually really, really good. I'll put a uh, record of what it's given me here into the video description so you can see all of this and take your time going through it. But this is great. So the question was quite specific and it has not let me down on this. I would certainly consider using this uh, for just generally trying to structure revision. And you could fine tune that question to your own learning style and things. This is really good. I'm actually really happy with this and I would recommend that you use ChatGPT to try and uh, organize your revision a bit more like this. Okay, so moving on, what I'd like it to do next is design me a revision plan which allows me to revise each of my three different A-levels. So let's see if it can do this one instead as well and give us just as much information. This one's a bit more general, um, but it has used the actual subjects. It's, it's also tried to give me actual sections from within the subject so it's tried to talk about specific things from chemistry in here as well it's also done a nice little mixed review day where i look at various different things this is not bad at all again if you're looking to plan out how to revise your three different a-level subjects or more if you're doing four then again this is not bad and with a bit of fine tuning this would give you an absolutely terrific response that you could use for your a-level and then finally here, let's ask it the all important question. What's the most important or the most effective way to revise for your A-level exams? Let's see what we get out of it for this final one. So it's told us to make a plan. It's telling us to do some active learning of things, past exam questions, mnemonics, visual aids. Okay, again, this is really useful. So again, alongside the other revision planning stuff, maybe not so much the chemistry that we've tried in this tutorial, but alongside the other revision planning stuff, it has really come out well on this. I'm really pleased with this. It is definitely something useful that I'd recommend you consult in order to help you plan your revision and maybe shake things up a little bit. Maybe if you're trying to avoid certain ways of revising that you're getting a bit too bogged down in, it's definitely something I could recommend for the future. Have you had any success with the use of AI to help with your revision? Let me know with a comment down below. And before you go, I need some help. Please leave this video a like to help support my channel as it helps YouTube know I still exist. There's lots of links on screen now to all other video content on my channel. And as always, I'll leave some good stuff down in the video description. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.